probiotics are great because they're going to reset your butt. <laughs> reset your butt? <laughs> probiotics are great because they're going to reset your gut flora. Hello, my beautiful birthing people. I have another video for you guys today. This one is actually going to be all about postpartum, things that we can get together to prepare for postpartum period, things that we might need for the postpartum period, things that we need to start thinking about for the postpartum period. So while I'm wearing my cervix sweater, we're not talking about labor. We're not talking about the cervix today. We are talking about the postpartum period. So what is the postpartum period? This is gonna be the period after you have your baby. And while sometimes we think about the postpartum period as a matter of weeks or a matter of months, it's really kind of the rest of your life after you've had a baby, where there are changes that are in your body, this beautiful body, right, that has nourished and, and cared for a baby for the last nine months, that has put so much forth for this baby. It now needs to be nourished and cared for itself. And that is physically and that is mentally and there is a lot going on. And there's a lot that I want you guys to kind of be thinking about, hopefully before you have your baby. This is something that we need to prepare for just like when we take a childbirth education class, just like when we learn how to push. We need to learn how to take care of ourselves in this postpartum period. It's a really vulnerable period. It can be a really messy period. It can be a period where you're feeling really sore and bruised and your body just feels spent. And so what you need to do is make sure that you have the tools and resources available to build yourself back up into this brand new person that you are, right? This brand new person who gave birth to a brand new person, who is now a brand new person. There's a lot of brand new people happening. When you give birth, you don't just give birth to a baby. You give birth to a new person as well. I'm gonna start with the physical and then we'll kind of move from there. These are a lot of tips. Hopefully some of them you guys will find helpful and if you have any other tips, definitely leave them down below. I would love to hear them from you. When we think about postpartum healing, a lot of us think about vaginal tearing, perineal tearing, labial tearing, hemorrhoids, things in your booty region that maybe aren't feeling quite so great anymore. And this is when there might be some differences. There's going to be differences, I should say. Um, are you having an in-hospital birth? Or are you having an out-of-hospital birth? Are you having a hospital birth in the United States? Are you having a hospital birth outside of the United States? Now, I work on the East Coast of the United States. I have been associated with and worked at or been schooled at three different hospitals, all in the same state on the East Coast. So what I'm saying right now might not be applicable to where you're delivering. And the biggest thing I would say is ask beforehand, have a, one of your OB appointments where you ask, hey, what's gonna be provided for me postpartum? And if they don't know, call the unit and ask them so that you really know what's going to be provided for you. But this is what was provided for me after I had a baby. And these were all things that a lot of people are like, well, they're charging me $45 for an ibuprofen, right? Yes, insurance in America is insane. But there are a lot of things that you're not gonna be charged for individually because they're part of like a global birth package. So yes, if you were to get some sort of bill and then you ask for a breakdown, there might be a charge for this, but it's not something that we charge you specifically for. It's more something that comes in your labor pack. The exception for this would be like medication. So anything that we scan individually for you, that would be something that you're charged for individually, but a lot of the things that are just in our storeroom or who, that come in your labor packs are yours to take. So make sure that you're taking everything home from the hospital with you. Make sure if these things aren't being offered for you that you ask for them. So this is one that is scanned at my hospital. This is a medication. This is a numbing spray, Dermaplast. You can get this on Amazon. You can get this in a drugstore. It is nice and numbing and cooling for those area that has stitches. It can feel super great. Also, it will feel good on a hemorrhoid if you've got that going on. So cute, so fun. I have a video all about hemorrhoids that you guys should definitely check out. Witch hazel pads can also be really, really soothing and comforting. They're super cooling. This is the pack that we give at my hospital. I always tell people when they go home, throw these in the refrigerator so that they're extra cooling. These are gonna feel really nice. I tell my patients with their pad, here, let me pull out a pad too. Pretend like you are enjoying a fine Subway sandwich and you've asked for some provolone cheese and just lay these out so that you have them all across the board 
on your sandwich. Can you eat Subway again? Maybe not. I've actually had people before tell me like, I can never eat Subway again. Why did you say that? I'm sorry, my brain doesn't work that way. But that way they sit up against your bottom. As your bleeding starts to slow down a few days postpartum, as it tends to for most people, your stitches might start to feel a little bit dry, so the witch hazel pads can be really soothing and cooling for that. If you're experiencing hemorrhoids, I recommend like sticking this up in between the, your butt cheeks so that it's actually like touching the hemorrhoids and that can feel really, really great and fabulous. Another thing that the hospital is gonna give you are some beautiful, sensual, disposable underwear. These are fabulous because they keep everything nice and locked and loaded and they can be thrown away. I am big on reduce, reuse, recycle. Reusable menstrual pads are great. Reusable menstrual underwear is great. Menstrual cups, I love all of that. I think sometimes there can be brief periods of our lives where for our mental and physical health, we have so many other things going on that having something that we can throw away is really nice. When you're bleeding a lot right after you have a baby, it can be really nice to have underwear that you throw away. If you're not comfortable with that, then certainly by all means use your own underwear. But taking home extras of these, definitely on my recommended list. Then the last thing, this is something that I think doesn't get as much love as it should when it feels bomb. If you've got hemorrhoids, I had hemorrhoids after both my kids, but after Holden, I would say that was the most painful part of the after birth experience was a very um, pesky, enlarged, inflamed, and painful hemorrhoid. This sits bath was life. So a sitz bath is literally just a way that you can get some nice warm water on your bottom. It's going to allow healing cells to go to that area because warmth draws our cells and our blood flow. And it also just feels amazing. So with this sitz bath, there are options where you can like put different herbs and things in your sitz bath. Check with your doctor for that. I only just used water. All I ever give my patients is just water. This you fill up with really pretty warm water. It's clamped off like an IV bag. And then this you put in nice warm water. You put up both seats of your toilet. This sits inside. This sits on the back of your toilet. And then you unclamp it. And you get a nice little jacuzzi for the booty. Do it three times a day for a few minutes to 20 minutes. Whatever feels good or right for you. I know you have a brand new baby. Maybe you have other kids and you're like, how can I find time to do this? But like... It is worth it. If your booty's sore, this feels so good. This can be done after about 24 hours. We recommend doing alternating ice and nothing for maybe the first 24 hours and then this, and you can still do ice afterwards as well after the first 24 hours, but this after 24 hours feels amazing. The hospital also is going to provide you with pads. Typically birth packs come with like some really large like hefty pads. Sometimes they're even more of like a diaper type situation just depending on where you deliver. And then after that, these smaller but still really thick pads. I took mine home with me, right? But I actually prefer just for comfort something that's a little bit thinner and ideally with some wings. So I don't have any pads in here. I used up all of these, but these are like some always really thin, flexible pads with wings. These are their like level five protection overnight. Something that is large, takes up a lot of space, is gonna be really beneficial because for some reason, no matter where you put the pad, the blood likes to go where the pad is not. So it's nice to have a pad that takes up a really wide area. Even when you're not bleeding a lot, I have found that to be the case. Get yourself a stool for your bathroom, or better yet, a squatty potty, so that you can best facilitate a comfortable position for pooping. Because we know being constipated after you have a baby and having that first poop when you have pushed a baby out of an area very close to your rectum can be both terrifying and uncomfortable. Um, if you've had a cesarean birth or significant tearing and you're taking narcotics to control pain, those also can increase constipation. So getting in a really good position for giving birth to your first bowel movement is going to be really beneficial and a squatty potty 
helps facilitate that. I have a video all about hemorrhoids that I will link here that I talk about at the end and show you how to poop effectively and with the least strain on your pelvic floor and on your rectum region, particularly if you have hemorrhoids. So check that out if you're struggling with that. Now, if these things aren't provided to you by your hospital, by your birthing center, if you're birthing at home, these are all things that can be purchased at a drugstore or even Baby Frida has a whole bunch of really awesome postpartum kits that you can buy. They're a little bit pricey, but if you're not gonna be having these things available to you, it's nice to have those things on hand to get things feeling back to normal. There can be some wounds, right, on our perineal area, on our labia, on our vaginal walls from baby exiting. But there's other wounds that we need to think about too. When your placenta detaches from your uterus, it leaves about a dinner plate size, eight and a half inch wound in your uterus. And so your uterus is going to be really working to clamp down and contract so that you don't have too much bleeding. So there are things that we can do to bolster your uterus doing this. And a big one that you have the most control over is resting after you have your baby, having a lying in period. There are a lot of cultures where the grandmother, the aunts come and take care of the person who's just given birth and that they don't lift a finger. While it is important that you are getting up and doing some walking, right? We don't wanna have a blood clot because you don't get out of bed for two weeks. Resting is really, 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 really important. It's also really difficult because if this isn't your first baby, you might be running around after a toddler or you might not have adequate maternity leave and being forced to go back to work at four weeks postpartum when you're still bleeding vaginally from your birth. So really focusing on resting for those first couple of weeks postpartum on really taking in good nutrients, on allowing your body to heal and recuperate is going to be so vital when we look at our recovery down the road. And so allowing people to do things for you is gonna be really beneficial, but also just realizing like things don't need to be perfect. Your house doesn't need to be spotless. Everything will come in time, but giving your body that chance to heal and relax and recuperate is going to be so important for your overall health. Another thing that can play a big role in helping you feel back to normal, particularly if you have any injuries to your pelvic floor, if you're finding postpartum that intercourse is painful or that you're having any issues like that, is seeking out help from a pelvic floor PT. There are a lot, a lot, a lot, and I've talked about this multiple times, a lot of things that are considered to be common postpartum, like not being able to hold in your urine, painful intercourse, things of that nature that are common. They're not normal and they're not something that you should have to live with. So seeking out help from a pelvic floor PT at six weeks postpartum after you've had your postpartum follow-up appointment with your doctor and they have said that everything medically looks good can definitely be really beneficial. And I know a lot of people think, well, I've had a C-section so everything should be fine with my pelvic floor, but your pelvic floor was literally holding up all of the, your organs, so your uterus, which was super enlarged, and your bowel and your bladder. So there still can be injury to your pelvic floor just from that hammock being stretched out or manipulated by the pregnancy. There also, if you did labor at all, there can be some injuries that happen in that regard. And there also can be issues with how everything is healing up with your C-section, right? A whole bunch of abdominal muscles were cut through and we're having to kind of work to make sure that your pelvic floor is adjusting to that change and working on desensitizing your scar and things of that nature all are gonna be important with a C-section as well as vaginal delivery. So that's where a pelvic floor PT can come in particular handy. Speaking of a C-section, something that can be really beneficial that a lot of hospitals do offer is a abdominal binder after delivery. This can be used when you're up and moving around to help you feel locked and loaded and supported. You also can just use some high-waisted leggings with a little bit of support to do this as well because our goal of an abdominal binder is to make sure that you're feeling secure. It is in no way meant to shrink your belly back down, make your uterus smaller, make your abdomen smaller, engage your core muscles in such a way that it is 
exercising or doing anything to affect what you look like. It's to affect how you feel and how you're being supported. So high-waisted leggings or things that you can bring with you to the hospital or ask for an abdominal binder after a cesarean birth and your doctor will kind of go forth with you when you should be using that and when that's appropriate to be used because we can't overuse an abdominal binder. We wanna make sure that you are still engaging your core muscles as things start to heal. Another area where we're gonna need a little bit of extra support is with our boobs. So whether you are choosing to breastfeed or choosing not to breastfeed, the type of bra that you have postpartum is gonna be pretty important. My personal favorite bra is from Target, the Auden collection, Auden? I'm not quite sure how you say that. This is my favorite bra. It has built-in pads, no underwire. It's super soft, but it does have some support. I like these because they're not really specifically sized, so they'll fit a wide variety. The extra large in this, I have heard from subscribers, fits quite a large chest, but obviously if we need extended sizing, Bravado, which is a nursing bra company, also has really great extended sizes for their bras. But these are some of my favorite. And with this bra, it's also going to keep in place any sort of breast pad that you might need. So a lot of times after we have our babies and then our milk comes in at about three to five days postpartum for your first baby, your milk is like, oh, you wanted me to come in? Yes, I'm gonna come in and it comes in full force. You have your Dolly Parton boobs, you are feeling a little sore, but like these are nice. And those breasts, because they are so large and full of milk and your body's trying to figure out exactly how to regulate a supply, they're going to leak milk pretty often as they get a little bit full. Sometimes if you're breastfeeding on one side, the other side will leak. So having um, a breast pad in the beginning that you can put in your bra, whether you are going to be using the reusable kind or the disposable kind is really beneficial to keep you from getting an infection because we know that infections can be bred in moist, warm environments. So being able to change out those breast pads as they get moist or soiled is going to be beneficial, particularly if you're having issues with cracked or bleeding nipples. Now, if you are choosing not to breastfeed, then you wanna make sure that you have a really nice, tight sports bra that you can bring with you to the hospital and wear. And this is going to encourage your milk to not come in or to not come in as fully and as uncomfortably. Other things that we can do to deal with the discomfort of painful full breasts are ibuprofen as prescribed by your doctor, ice, not letting hot water in the shower beat down on our breasts, and then also, oddly enough, using cabbage leaves in your bra is going to help reduce your engorgement and discomfort as you are kind of waiting for your milk to go away when it's coming in. Now, talking about boobs and breastfeeding, we're gonna start to move on to some other things that we can do that are gonna be really important for your postpartum support. Some things that I think can be really beneficial is to have a list of professionals and a list of resources that you might need in your postpartum experience and use your time while you're pregnant to talk to friends and family, to talk to people in your community. If you're part of like a local area Facebook group, ask in those groups, does anybody have a recommendation for a really good international board certified lactation consultant that will come to your house after you have your baby? Does anybody have a really good recommendation for a pelvic floor physical therapist that's local in town? If you are somebody who has suffered in the past from postpartum depression, depression, anxiety, any sort of mood disorder, finding somebody before you give birth that you could talk to if you an issue arises postpartum can be really, really, really beneficial. If you're taking medications for any sort of mood disorder, talking with your OB, with a international board certified lactation consultant and the prescriber of your medications to make sure that your medications are safe for what you're planning to do postpartum as far as breastfeeding or making a plan if they are unsafe to figure out if you still would like to stay on them and they are working well and helping you control any sort of mood disorder that you had or if you want to change medications. These are all really important things that we talk about beforehand. For me personally, as somebody who has suffered from postpartum depression in the past, I am going to advocate to have a two-week postpartum follow-up appointment. 
If you just want to talk with somebody about your mood and how you're feeling at two weeks postpartum, a telehealth visit can be a really great way to do that if that's something that you're feeling comfortable doing. Sometimes meeting in person can be really beneficial too. What we know about postpartum depression, and I have a video all about it, is that a lot of times we have kind of a baby blues, like we're a little bit weepy and very emotional for those first two weeks postpartum as our hormones are going crazy. But at about two weeks postpartum, that is when we tend to see postpartum depression crop up, although it can happen anywhere in the first year. Something else that's important for you to just keep a keen eye out for is any sort of other issues or warning signs. I have a video all about postpartum warning signs to watch out for that I really encourage you to watch and to print off the information sheet that I have attached with that video because looking out for those things postpartum are gonna be a really big and important part of you taking care of yourself and making sure that everything is going appropriately after you have your baby. So another thing for me, let me go grab my big water bottle that is useful for me after I have a baby, well just in general because I struggle with drinking a lot of water, is I have a really big amazing water bottle that I fill up with ice water, keeps it really cold. This is really important. Drinking and enough water after you have your baby is really important because it can be really easy to become dehydrated as your milk comes in. Your body just kind of throws everything into that and you have a lot of healing to do. So you need to make sure that you're really nice and well hydrated. There are some other things that are super important as our body is trying to heal tears, heal that area where our placenta was, heal a cesarean birth scar, kind of looking for ways to make meals quick and easily that are also healthy. Making sure that they're rich in protein is going to be important and whole foods. Well, how can we make things rich in protein and whole foods when we're struggling just to like go to the bathroom by ourselves, right? We're holding our babies all the time. We're not feeling like we have a lot of time and energy to spend on food we're gonna do some wiggle room, right? We're gonna use our crock pot and our instant pot to do the cooking for us. You can go on Pinterest and find amazing crock pot and instant pot meals. Some snacks that I love to make in the instant pot are hard boiled eggs. Another kind of thing that you can do if you are scrambling for a meal, buy pre-cut fruit buy pre-cut veggies. It's one less step for you. It's slightly more expensive, but if it's going to help you eat those foods, do that. Buy canned fruits and vegetables. Make sure that you're rinsing them well to get off any extra sodium or sugar or frozen fruits and vegetables. These are all better options than fast food. Another great option, rotisserie chicken. Okay, you can make like three or four good meals out of a rotisserie chicken. And then when you're done, if you're feeling really creative, you can use that carcass those bones to make a really nice nutrient and collagen rich bone broth, which is so beneficial for healing. And then as far as what we should be doing nutritionally and with supplements to support ourselves, continue to take your prenatal vitamin can be a great step, but moving into something as a postnatal vitamin could be an even better step. Starting to take a probiotic or eat probiotic rich foods can be really beneficial, particularly if you did have to have antibiotics for an infection or group B strep during your delivery. Probiotics are great because they're gonna reset your gut flora and they also will go through your breast milk and help set your baby's gut flora as well. So going and getting a really good probiotic, taking it every day for a month will help get everything reset. And then eating probiotic rich foods like yogurt, fermented foods can also do some really good work for your gut, which can be really important because we know when we have a nice healthy gut, the rest of us feels a lot healthier too. Okay, so getting together help in providing meals, whether that be you've made freezer meals beforehand, or you have subscribed to a delivery service that delivers fresh cooked meals to your house. If that's an option, obviously a little bit more expensive. If you're doing something like HelloFresh or Home Chef, but your partner's helping cook those, because I think it's a lot to be on your feet. Sometimes those meals can be a little bit cumbersome. Another option that I think can be really beneficial for getting good healthy foods postpartum, setting up a meal train and you set up the meal train for yourself. If you have people who are asking you what they can do, like, oh, please let me know if I can do anything. And speaking of this, I have a lot to say. <laughs> a lot of times I feel like, I don't know if it's American culture or just 21st century culture, when people offer to give us help, we have a really hard time, one, actually accepting help, and two, giving out instructions of things that we can do to help. 
this becomes doubly difficult during a global pandemic when we are working on our social distancing, not having people who don't live in our home come into our home. So what are things that people can do to help while maintaining safe guidelines set up by the CDC? Things that I have brainstormed and thought of. Obviously having them drop off meals and food. If you don't have grocery store pickup options in your area or grocery delivery, having them pick up groceries for you could be really useful and beneficial. Having them do laundry for you. And I'm saying I leave some dirty laundry out on the porch, you come take my dirty laundry to your house and you wash it. Having them bring crafts or kits or things to entertain your older children might be something that could be beneficial. Having somebody quarantine in their house for 14 days before coming to stay and help you in your house is also something that you can do. Talk with your OB, talk with your pediatrician about the specific risk in your area and what makes you feel comfortable and safe and accept help in those ways. But finding creative ways to accept help because really this postpartum period should not be something that's done without a village can be so beneficial. The last thing I wanna say about your postpartum period is that well, yes, your postpartum period is going to be exhausting. You're going to be sore, you're gonna be tired, you're going to be emotional. There's also so much beauty in this period. When you are reborn as a new person, just like when you're giving birth, you are also a new person too. And you and this brand new little baby get to grow and work together. And what I hope for you is that you have planned your postpartum period in a way that your other needs are being met by the things that you've done to prepare yourself, by family and friends who are offering their help and support, by a supportive partner. But having these conversations beforehand and having plans in place beforehand will help because from a lot of people who I have talked to, they have said, I was prepared for the labor. I took the classes. I did the research. I don't feel like I was as prepared for this part afterwards. And the part afterwards lasts a lot longer than the labor. Being prepared for labor is important, but it's equally as important to be prepared for your postpartum period. So ask these questions early, have the conversations with your partner early. How am I going to get adequate sleep and adequate nutrition? How are we gonna support each other in making sure that we both have rest time and alone time and self-care time? Because that's so important. Don't let yourself get lost in your new role as a parent. It's an important role, but you're more than that. And you've always been more than that. But figuring out how to best support yourself and best support your family before you have your baby. And then figuring out what resources you need to reach out to after you have your baby when you need more support is gonna be so important. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. Definitely, if you have any other postpartum ideas, leave them down below. Bye guys.